up y'all, it's Jimmy coming to you guys with another video. Before we get into the video, as always, make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And when you guys hit subscribe, please make sure you guys are hitting that notification button. So getting right to the video, you guys can see by the title, this is gonna be another discussion video. Something I kind of wanted to talk about for a while, but I just never made a video on it. You know, with sneakers becoming super popular, I'm not saying they're now becoming popular because they have been popular for quite a while, I'll say within the past two to three years, sneakers have really, really become mainstream. I'll say at the start of like 2018 to 2019 till now is when the hype of sneakers has grown exponentially. And with that right, sneakers becoming super popular and everything becoming kind of like a buy, sell trade type of market. Clearly there are a lot of people that are getting into sneakers for the purpose of selling and making money. And absolutely no knock to those people because if there's a market for it, people will always be diving into it because people are always trying to make money and that's just the reality of the world we live in, right? Like no one is just going to do something purely just because they love it. Well, I take that back. There are plenty of people that do things for the sake of just loving it. But with that, there's also the side of the people that will do stuff because there's a demand for it, there's a market for it, and if there's money to be made, there will be people diving into it as well. And knowing that, I think it's kind of a tricky or kind of like a tough situation because you have all these people with a good amount of money that can buy a bunch of brick shoes, sit on them, clearly right, they have a couple thousand, probably more than a couple thousand because they're buying like 50, 60 pairs of a pair of Air Jordan 1 sitting on them for a year or so waiting for the price to go up if they do. And typically for sneakers, like the trend that I've seen is that most sneakers do go up in price, but that doesn't mean that every sneaker is gonna go up in price. I have two shoes that I wanna talk to you guys specifically and I have them in hand. Um, you know, there are a bunch of shoes that are dub GR, so general releases. Shoes, like if you guys saw my Nike Blazer low review, that's a pair of shoes that you're going to buy because you want to wear it. That's something that I'm not purchasing because I think the value of that shoe is going to go up and up, but more so a shoe that I think looks really clean and I want to wear personally. And then on the other hand, you have shoes that you know probably will go up in price pretty well, uh, just based off of like the history of like the model. Specifically, what I'm talking about is the Air Jordan 1. So and the Nike Dunks as well actually. Um, I feel like in the past one to two years, like every Air Jordan 1, or at least for the most part, the majority of the colorways that have dropped have gone up in price at least by one to 200 bucks. If you have like the Breads, Royal Shadows from like 2017, those all went up in price like crazy. So I was saying the word market a lot and with everything that has value, there's gonna be kind of like a general baseline market that people use that to basically value all their products. And for sneaker heads or people in the high culture, a lot of people use stock X to determine the value of what they're trying to sell at. So some of you might hate it, some of you might love it. I personally kind of sit in the middle. I do think it's nice that there is kind of like a very open source type of market that everyone can look at. And because back then I'll say, most of the prices were a little bit more random, but they were based on like flight club prices, eBay prices, so it varied quite a bit, but StockX I feel like is a more general baseline, which is nice. So I've never considered myself a sneaker reseller or by anything of those means, like I've never bought shoes for the sole purpose of just letting them sit and hoping they go up in price. But there are two shoes that I bought with my two cousins and we bought them for the sole purpose of expecting them to go up in price. And you guys will see like, you know, I'll talk about the initial price point where we bought them at and the price they're at now. So the two shoes that me and my cousins were able to purchase for the sake of quote unquote investing are two pairs of pretty hyped shoes. And you guys will see, we have a pair of off-white Air Jordan 1 Chicago's and a pair of Fragment Air Jordan 1's these are not in our size so right these are a pair of shoes that we can't even really wear because they're too big at least for myself they're too big but you know these are shoes that are super coveted super hyped like this is both pairs are actually grails for a lot of people 
And you know, we were just able to come up on an opportunity where the seller was selling them for really cheap because he needed the cash quick, verified they were authentic, you know, got the good price for them. I'll tell you guys for both pairs, we paid 6,000. Um, they're not DS, both of them are worn like once or twice, have OG everything from box down to receipt. So at the time, 6K, so this was like, I wanna say May of 2019, because I think it was actually a little bit into the, into the pandemic, but both pairs for 6K, so it was basically 2K a pop um, from each person, considering there are three people. And at the time, I'll say like, it was a good investment, um, just off the sake that, you know, these are fragment ones, and these are off-white Chicago ones, like a class, both are very classic shoes. Like I said, very hype, very coveted. Everyone wants these in their collection. So keeping that in mind, right, like I said, you do have to have the capital, just the spare cash lying around. For you to make this type of purchase, you know, it helps if you have multiple people going. It's a little bit weird if, you know, everyone can wear the shoe because everyone's gonna wanna wear the shoe, but luckily in this case, these were more so just display shoes, you know, that we could purchase, you know, really good condition and all that, and then just sit on them without the any idea of wearing them because you physically can't. But like I said, 2K or basically 3K per pair, you know, like let's just split it right down the middle. Um, and this was May of 2019. And like I said, Stock X does go off of a DS condition shoe. Um, so it doesn't necessarily correlate, but because these are basically, they're honestly basically DS, like the conditions of both the shoes are honestly perfect. But with that in mind, I'm gonna check out StockX and I'm gonna show you guys the whole sneaker trend, the price point and everything like that. But we'll start off with the fragments. Um, so those are both a size 11 and you guys can see right now the price, the buy it now price is about 4,500. The sell it now price is 3,300. Clearly after fees and everything, if you sell on StockX, you'll probably only make like, I wanna say, 2900 or something like that which is still pretty good but you know StockX does take a lot of fees but the cool thing about StockX is if you go to the very bottom they kind of have like a price history like a trend in which you can see they sold it i don't know how far back it goes so it goes back actually pretty far it goes back to 2018 so let's check the date right of when we bought the shoes so we got the shoes so I take it back, we got it 2020 because that's when the pandemic happened. I think I said 2019, but let's go to like roughly March or April of 2020. So April, March, 2020, you know, a little bit into the, into the pandemic, um, you know, starting off at the first date of March. So for 3,200, then basically 3K, 3,200, 4,400 basically, then 3,800 up until May. But basically the price point seems to have stayed pretty consistent with this shoe, right? So for a good while, like the shoe was basically selling, I wanna say for an average of 3,200, 3,100, something along those lines. And we got the shoe used, you know, basically nine out of 10 V and DS condition for maybe, at the, it might have been a little bit less than uh, 6K for both of the pairs. It might have been like 5,700, but basically let's say we got the shoes for 2,700, right? At the time that was kind of like an even wash, right? Based off of the stock X, like I wouldn't be afraid of losing any money on the shoes, but I wouldn't expect to make too much. But let's just check out the trends of the shoes as time progresses. And this is really one of those shoes where it's like, you know, the fragment ones are probably never gonna come out again. Like I highly doubt Jordan Brown would ever re-release this shoe. Like the breads, the Royals, the Shadows, like that's something that I will always expect Jordan Brand to drop like maybe once every five, six years. But this is a shoe that I think is never gonna come out, which is a big reason why we bought the shoe. But going into the year, you guys can see starting at 2021 the shoe the price of the shoe definitely started to go up like the cheapest selling point was 3600 in what is that july june that's, so that's june of 2021 so within a year um 
the cheapest price point went up about 500 bucks and then there hasn't been too many sales where this is just a shoe that is a little bit more expensive and basically the stock of this shoe is really low, especially for a ds pair so you're not going to find many ds pairs around but there was a recent sale so let's just fast forward to this year there was a recent sale in january of this year for 4500 so it's pretty crazy because within basically a two-year time span the the cheapest so it's pretty crazy right because within two years basically two years the cheapest price point in which you could buy the shoe at was probably like 3100 3k you could probably find a used pair for like 28 27 you know which is basically what we got it at but now a ds pair is going to run you near 45 4600 um clearly that's like the highest price point so so within two years the price of the shoe jumped up about 1500 you know and that's actually not too bad especially just for sitting on a pair of shoes like i said this is something that you can't think about right this is something you're gonna buy and you're just gonna have to sit on especially like same thing applies to like if you buy 50 pairs of Mocha's ones when they first came out, like you just have to sit on it and let the stock of the shoe rise. But two years, um, shoe jumped up about 1500. I'll say that is also a very skewed price because if you look at this here, the highest bid is only 3300, which is a $1,200 difference. So it really varies, right? The whole thing with these like more expensive limited shoes that go up into the couple thousand dollars, you have to find that seller or that buyer really that's willing to buy the shoe for the price you're trying to sell it at. But nonetheless, the fragments definitely went up in price. Now moving on to the Chicago's and just looking at their price history. So this shoe is a little bit more tough just because Virgil did pass away, right? So rest in peace, Virgil you know big shout out to him for everything that he has done for like the sneaker game just like fashion community streetwear community because he's definitely changed the game and impacted it heavily but because virgil passed away it made this shoe just fluctuate so crazy kind of basically like when kobe died and all his shoes just jumped up crazy in price but checking this off white air jordan one chicago's like i said these are a size 11. this is a shoe that we I don't want to say, I don't know, this is a shoe that's a little bit hard to gauge just because, like I said, when someone passes away, typically like an icon like this, like the price is just going to fluctuate and jump up so high. But looking at the price history, or I'll say just looking at the sell it now price, the buy it now price is $7,200 and the sell it now price is $6,500. So right then and there, that's, you know, like if we were to sell the shoe right now, like we basically made what we have put in our initial investment on for both of the shoes, which is pretty nice and reassuring, right? Because you're never worried about losing money or anything like that. Like, you know, if it ever comes to a point where you want to sell the shoes or you need the cash, you can sell the shoes. You know, it might take a little bit to find the seller because they are a used shoe. Um, but nonetheless, like you'll be able to make your money back. But going down and looking at the price history, um, same thing that we did with the fragments. Let's just go down and look at all sales. So starting in May of 2020 or April of 2020, the shoe was going for, let's see, April, let's find April. The shoe was going for 3,300. So like I said, at the time, both shoes DS, like you could sell them for like basically 7K, right? And we got both shoes i'm pretty sure it might it might have been like 5500 which is actually still pretty good for both of those shoes and divided by three people it wasn't too much per person to go in but basically both shoes were going for 3200 3500 for some reason um from like march to april the price jumped up 600 bucks and it seemed like it stayed that way consistently um it never really dipped back down but going up you guys can see the price point is basically starting to consistently stay at 4k so in july of 2020 is when it never really dipped back down below 4k so the cheapest was 4100 uh, basically 4100 
Um, it dipped back down to 3,900 later that year in October. Um, yeah, it did in October, it sold for 3,800. But let's just fast forward to today. I mean, we can think about when actually Virgil passed away, which was in like November or November, December last, uh, it was November of 2021. So we can check out the price point. Clearly I can see the price is jumping up even again. So uh, starting of February, 2021, that's when it sold, or I take it back. F yeah, February, 2021, the shoe sold for 5,400. So the price is definitely starting to shoot up. Um, then let's jump and fast forward to when Virgil passed away. So Virgil passed away, right? November, the shoe sold for 7,300. 8k 9k clearly these are like crazy prices that not that many people are going to pay besides the ones that have the money or think that's worth the investment um but these are also people that are like they're buying from sellers that are like really inflating their prices due to a recent event you know and like everyone's going to have their own opinion about that i myself i don't think it's right or just to profit off of someone passing away but to each their own right. I'm not here to knock them on how they make their money. But ever since, right, November of 2021, the shoe never did, so the shoe did dip back down to 6,500 um, at the end of 2021. And then it basically stayed at least at 6,500. So pretty crazy within two years, the shoe doubled in value clearly for its double in value kind of varies just because, you know, with this shoe in particular, I think if Virgil didn't pass away, there's no way this shoe right now would be 6,500 brand new versus like 7K. Um, I think if Virgil was still here, the shoe would probably be like at a good 45, 5K, 4,500 to 5K. Um, so yeah, like I said, you guys got to see the whole kind of price point of shoes, you know, Kind of like from a personal experience of actually buying the shoe for like an investment purpose sitting on the shoe and then seeing the price point go up i will say i don't expect every shoe to go up in price like this i know the two examples i showed you guys were very kind of like niche examples right like it was off white chicago ones and an air drone one fragments i know those are shoes that are just super hype super limited and something that of course is probably going to go up in price over time but I know a lot of Air Jordan ones, a lot of people buy them expecting them to go up, but they kind of just stay bricks for a little bit. You know, I think a good thing to gauge is colorway, model, um, and just overall hype of the shoe. If that's like your whole purpose of getting into sneakers, buying to make money, I think it's good to just watch trend videos or to be able to keep up with the times and know what people are really liking. And I'll leave the video on this note. I don't think this is for everyone, right? This is something where it's like, you're not gonna make a shit ton of money doing it. You know, like you're not gonna be able to provide for your family, provide for yourself. Like clearly, yeah, like both of these shoes right here doubled in price and we could sell them for a good amount right now, but we don't really have any intentions to sell them right anytime soon, at least. You know, I think this is a shoe that maybe we just keep in the collection forever you know, just something that's like a display piece. I know it's a very expensive display piece and it's a privilege to say that we can keep these shoes um, just for the purpose of that. But this is something where, you know, you're gonna do it because you love it. You know, I'll say if you wanna buy shoes primarily for the reason of selling them, I think it's better to just really go to the general releases that are coming out. Try to pick a shoe that is gonna come out pretty soon, like a bunch of Air Jordan ones, stockpile on that shoe sit on them let them go up in price you gotta wait like a year two three maybe but you know if the shoes go up then you hit pretty big but let me know what you guys think are there any shoes that you guys have bought that have gone up a lot in price or have there been any shoes that have gone down a bunch for me i'll say none of my shoes have really gone down in price which is the reason why i say i never really think shoes are necessarily a bad investment right like if you're buying like a decently hyped pair of shoes like you could wear them a couple times you know like 
get a couple fits off you know, because at the end of the day like everyone loves shoes for the purpose of wearing them you're just styling them at least for you know the majority of people but i never think shoes are necessarily a bad investment clearly be wise with your money um, i'm definitely not condoning go out and blow a couple thousand dollars on some shoes just because it's a good long hold um, be wise be intentional and be purposeful with whatever you're buying and I'm gonna have another video this week. This is just a little discussion video while I wait for some shoes to come in. I did manage to hit on sneakers, so you guys will be seeing a review pretty soon. But that's gonna wrap up the video. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.